now with Lindsay Scorecraft. Yes. From Cradle of Filth, and you're the keyboard player. Yes. Backing vocalist. Back, and backing vocalist as well. I just heard you coming up the oh. stairs. <laughs> Singing on the revamp song, yeah, wailing yeah. on it. Not, I'm nowhere near Floor's technique, but I mean, I love her stuff. She's wow. fantastic. Yeah, so. uh, absolutely great. So, how come you, you're here today at uh, the festival? I ended up here. Um, I'm with Apparition, Grace Meriden, the lead singer. She's one of my best friends, and I came along to support her. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just kind of fell in place with me going to Scotland to work on the new Cradle Filth album with the bassist uh, Daniel Firth. So, I ended up here. Here, and I'm, I'm happy I could be here. I like a lot of the bands performing today. They've been good, haven't they? So oh, far? fantastic. Yeah. Love it. I, I, I think Dionysus stole my heart. Yeah. Nell and her voice. I, I, she actually brought a tear to my eye. And the last time that happened to me with a singer was Bjork. Ah, so, right. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's been nice for you sort of chilling out with everybody and catching up with yeah, everything. Yeah, a lot of the girls who were part of Eve's Apple are here, so it's like a little MFBF reunion, Eve's Apple reunion. We haven't seen each other for a long time. It's been oh, really nice. nice. Yeah. And tell me a bit about the uh, album that you're going to sort out in Scotland. Um, well, it kind of came together really quickly. Um, you know, with Cradle Filth, I, I can't really say, like, speak for the band or speak for Danny Filth because there's such a history there. It's been, they've been 20 years or something going nonstop. But yeah. uh, I joined the band January last year um, and it just, I did the world tour and then I recently did the European tour for them and I was always like a live keyboardist and then Danny just liked my work with my solo project, Schoolcraft, and he said, you know, I love your orchestration work so. Why don't you come and work on the new Cradle Filth album? So me and the bassist Daniel Firth just started writing Cradle Filth songs together because we play the music all the time. We already yeah. know the style, and then it just kind of went from there. And I'm just gonna head up to Scotland and finish all our demos together and see where it goes. It's oh, really exciting. Really exciting. So how did you feel when you got the opportunity to play with Cradle Filth? It was like Christmas morning. <laughs> it was. It, it, it happened at a time in my life where um, you know I I was in university. For or classical singing and I loved it but it wasn't like my true passion I always wanted to be part of a musical project performing and touring yeah. and, and uh, I love metal and I love symphonic music I love opera so I think Cradle of Filth kind of you know embodied all that including just dressing up like a goth I mean I'm pretty much the person I was in high school and it's my job now um, but when they found me it was it, it was definitely like a huge shock but it was a good thing and I, I quit school and I left and I went and became a part of the band absolutely <laughs> I just yeah it's an opportunity you can't sort of turn down really no and I, I couldn't have I, I even told my parents and they're like well you're just gonna do what you're gonna do and we know that you know it took me only 27 years to tell them <laughs> make them realize that you know I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do yeah you know uh, yeah, it's it's been good. I'm very blessed, very grateful. Like, you don't. It's not every day you're sitting on Facebook and you're just chugging along with the solo project and going to university, and then a big one of the biggest, you know, yeah. influential metal bands contacts you and says, "We want you to be part of our band." And I was shaking <laughs> at my when I got the message. I started shaking. You didn't think it was a hoax to begin with, or anything like. I I asked because it was Melissa Furlack. Uh, she used to sing for Visions of Atlantis, and now she's part of. Um, she does stuff for Ad Inferno, but she also has a project with her husband called My Eternal, and you know she's part of Eve's Apple. We're all yeah. sisters, and she's she said, "Hey, do you want do you want this gig? I found this gig, and I think you'd be perfect for it." And I just, I'm like, "Are you serious right now?" And she's like, "Yes, you need to contact like the guitarist and and get, you know, your audition tape to them." And I did, and that was it. The rest is history. Oh, wow. <laughs> Brilliant story, absolutely yeah. brilliant, you know. And so you've got the helping write the new album, getting stuff together on that. Looking at other um, tours coming up, are you playing anywhere? Um, the ones I can, like there's, there's things being planned, but I can't yeah. speak for yeah. Danny or the band um, because it's not public yet. But yeah. what we have is um, we are playing in Canada. The, the boys are coming to my homeland on June 21st to play Amnesia Rockfest. And I believe we're playing with Cannibal Corpse and Blink-182. That's which a mix. Is, yeah. yeah, I yeah. think even Weezer's on the festival. It's, it's quite a mix. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, after that, we have... I'm trying to think we have another one. Uh, we just confirmed Belgium on August 8th and we're opening for Marilyn Manson. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, and I can't I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of the festival. And then we have a, 
a special show in uh, Coventry. I hope I said that right. Yeah. I'm having a hard time yeah. saying your town names, being yeah. Canadian. We say things very differently. Uh, that one is August 16th, and it's a very special show. We're playing some really special stuff that night. And then the next day we have Alt Fest, August 17th. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. And Arch Enemy is actually playing, I think, we're, we're within out, an hour of another, so I'm going to go check out Elisa White Gloves. I'm going to check out her set. She's a new singer of Arch Enemy. Right. I can't wait to see her perform. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah, there's been quite a few changes changes in the music industry this year with um, lineups and things. Unbelievable. Uh, Trivium's announced that they've parted away with their drummer as well. Oh goodness. So yeah. that's Joey Jordison left, um, yeah. he was with Slipknot. Oh. Yeah, so there's been quite a few um, changes in lineups. so it's like the whole industry seems a little bit unsettled. We've been playing shuffleboard. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I think uh, Clementine Delaney, she got into Visions of Atlantis. Maxi Nil has, or Mahi Lil, uh, she has Jaded Star now. What else happened? Um, Angel Wolfblack is in um, Seduce the Heaven now. It's crazy. Like everybody just, like yeah, I'm just gonna trade. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna move around. Have a bit of a change around. Yeah, it's, it's great though. I'm I'm happy for everyone in their yeah. uh, like when their gigs and then when Elisa Wiggle has got the gig with Artemi, <laughs> I was just so happy for her. I it was in tears, you know, because uh, it would be the equivalent of me taking over for Amy Lee of Evanescence, right. like my idol. So yeah. but she deserves it. She works hard. She's yeah. a great person. Yeah. So it all sounds uh, really exciting for you. What's coming ahead? Yes, it's gonna be a busy year. Um, you know, it's uh, what's today, May 10th, I think. Yeah. And um, in a few more days, I uh, have some big news. I'm announcing on my website lots of big things happening for my solo project, but lots of great things for Cradle Falls, too. It's going to be a busy year. Awesome. I haven't been sleeping much. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. Yeah. You're on the go all the time. Okay. And so, coming to that, if you do, what do you do because you're busy all the time? How do you manage to relax? What do you do? Meditate, uh, cook, go for a walk in the forest. I play my harp. I, I, have harp. I love it. it. It's like an anger management. I uh, spend time with my fiance. I, I read books. I mean, it's been a crazy year, and now the harp is turning into kind of um, the job again because it's we want like Danny Filth wants the harp on the next right. Filth album. I'm playing the harp for my solo project. Yeah. Um, there's also a video game I'm gonna be a character in. It's called Karma Flow. It's like the rock opera video game. Oh. Tons of bands are involved. Oh, uh, wow. Epica's involved. Uh, Elisa White Gliss is in it. Uh, Elise Ridd from Amaranth. There's some big names. Yeah. Um, and I think Charlotte um, from Delane has just been added into. So uh, since being part of it, a character of that video game, I'm also gonna be playing harp as a video game character. So it's now. I I think I need to start more in new hobbies because the harp is going to become gonna my be job. job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes these things work out that way when you yeah. don't expect them to. I might take up belly dancing or something. I took a few lessons, loved it. I'm like, oh, well, why not? Why <laughs> not? Something. Incorporate it in your stage show somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure I'll find a way. <laughs> and then it'll become a job and then I'll need a new hobby. <laughs> That's it. That's the thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Right. And so what music are you currently listening to at the moment? Besides? Oh, it's embarrassing. Um, I This whole the whole tour with Cradle Filth and Behemoth in February, um, up to now, I, I love Ellie Goulding. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I think she's great. I, I love her voice. She's unique. I love her songwriting style, her lyrics. Um, I, I'm one of those people who I will listen to music and I'll rewrite it in my head. And a lot of her stuff, I think, was supposed to be ballads, slow, sappy ballads, but they turned it into pop dance music. But yeah. I still, I love it. Um, I've been listening to the new Epica album. Um, it's, I love it. It's amazing. Very proud of uh, the bassist Rob Vanderloo. He wrote um, quite a bit of the music. I think the B sides for sure he wrote, and I think they're brilliant. And uh, I'm happy for him. You know, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, so there's that. And oh man, what else have I been listening to lately? The new Delane album's good. Definitely check that out. So yeah, all good stuff. Yeah, all good stuff. It's nice that there's new music. Yeah. It's new things to get inspired by. And it's, it's really difficult, you know, because we interview and see a lot of um, unsigned bands, and it's very difficult for them to get themselves out there at the moment. I mean, but what um, advice would you have for what's happened to you for any young band out there trying to get out there or sing it? It's, it depends on how much you really want it. I mean, I've been doing this, I started when I was 15, and uh, there was a lot of sacrifices, sacrifices with family occasions, sacrifices with relationships, uh, money, time, sleep, sanity. Uh, it just, you know, the most important thing is become the best musician you can become, whether you're a songwriter or you're an instrumentalist or a front person or performer. Do what you do best and then learn to brand yourself so people can recognize you and it just kind of go from there. And it, the business does really 
take its toll on you. I'm glad I, I have a manager now, uh, Nadine Grimes from Naps Entertainment, and she's fantastic. She took over all the boring stuff that artists don't want to do. Yeah. And in this business today, you have to be self-sufficient, and you have to be doing um, all of your paperwork. You have to do all the boring stuff too. But if you can find a good manager who believes in you, take them on, let them take over that other side. It's a little bit of control loss, but on the other hand, what Nadine does for me, I mean, I'm like, good, take it, just, just take it. I don't want it anymore. I just want to be an artist. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder. I mean, when I was 15, so we're talking oh, 13 years ago, um, I had a punk band, and there was the Big Warp tour in, in North America, and, and there was so much more opportunity, even though I think MySpace was the thing back then. And there was a lot of online presence, but there was still more opportunity for media. And now these days, I think with metal being underground and the mainstream being so polished and hard to get into that, unless you like know people or have money, right? Um, it's it's difficult, but if if you really want it. Um, you will get it and my thing is is that I don't know how to do anything else like my thing of the day is like if you if this is the only thing you feel you are good at in life just go for it because god I can't do anything else I, I can't I couldn't work another job it just it just devours my soul and makes me miserable so <laughs> being a musician I know it's what I'm meant to be I yeah. love it oh excellent well thank you Lindsay very much for giving me some of your time and um, looking Thanks forward to the album when it comes out thank you I hope everybody likes it I'm sure we will <laughs> thank you <laughs> All right.